we are going to be testing these shotgun microphones together. So I'm speaking into the DPA 2017, it's the microphone literally right here. It's very dynamic, we're in a very, we're inside of a garage, so it's the, the acoustics are, they echo, definitely. Definitely not ideal, but. Definitely not ideal, but if you were to do like a, a sit down interview and like you have a little audio gate or denoiser, maybe, maybe it can work. So this is the microphone test with the DPA 2017. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. One more time. To sit in solemn silence on a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with the fuck this shit. <laughs> so right now I'm talking right into the polar pattern, right in the center where you want it. This is the ideal part so, but if I start going away, I'm gonna get a little bit off camera at the same time. So now I'm talking to the side of the mic. So mm. how does the volume, how does the tone and volume change from the side and then walking back mm. into where you're gonna hear? Yeah. Of course, it's a directional microphone, so you're gonna have that directional thing. Mm -hmm. But one important test is that what happens to the sound on the off access time? Uh, any mic that or any voice that is off access, what's what is the tone quality? What does the mic's behavior do with that kind of sound that goes off? True. Sure. And it'd be good to do that with every single mic, because you will notice not just tone and the you know how the volume goes. You might also notice when this happens when I suddenly fall off this edge of the earth with the sound. Mm. when that the moment that that happens is going to be different on every mic yeah i could definitely could you guys hear a difference let me know in the comments <laughs> yeah the only difference you might have from being on the mic and off the mic the biggest difference is volume yes for sure not as much tone so this is the dpa 2017 now we're speaking into the dds mic 2 this is the first shotgun microphone i ever used on a feature film this is also the microphone that adam so happened to sell me um when i was green to sound mixing and doing this professionally which i'm not green anymore hopefully <laughs> so i am right in front of it where it's meant to be directional to sit in solemn silence in a dull dark dock with a pestilential prison in a lifelong lock awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. So yeah, I can definitely, it's very directional, very directional for one. And it's also a really great shotgun microphone for the price it is and like the dynamics and like the, the build, the bass that you're getting, honestly. Again, this is the first microphone I used as a sound mixer and it served me really well for many gigs. I still use it to this day when I need to. So yeah, definitely something to look into. Also keep in mind, we're very early in this test and uh, Jeffrey has mentioned that, oh, this is a very directional microphone. He's gonna be very surprised very soon. So this is only the second microphone that we've tested, and um, so far I'm praising the DDS mic too, but let's see what other, <laughs> let's see what other mics we got going on. Yep. Now keep in mind, just a real quick for your audience, as we're recording this, on my mixer, which is a Zaxcom Max mixer, I have the gain set equally amongst all the mics. So you'll notice there's a volume difference between each because I'm putting the fader in the, the 12 o'clock position. You'll notice that there might be a volume difference per mic and that's demonstrating each mic is either uh, more sensitive or less sensitive. So you notice it's louder, it's more sensitive because I put them all equal is the idea. I didn't adjust them to try to be the same level, just adjust them to be the exact same number so that you can tell the difference. Gotcha, gotcha. And I did this test previously without the mic you're listening to right now. And I had the everything up to a plus 18 dB to be able to cause it to be equal. I couldn't do it here. I had to bring it down because of this specific mic. Mm. It's very sensitive. I had to put it all the way down to plus 10 dB. All right, this is the Senkin CS3E. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock on a cheap and chippy chopper with a big black block. This yeah. is the most directional mic in this lineup. Specifically, it's a lot of people use this as like, shotgun is 
probably the totally wrong word to call these mics. These should really be called snipers. Snipers? Probably would have been a better name, but whatever. So, yes. Why, why would you think a sniper would be a good name for it? Because normally a shotgun is a scattering. Fair. Versus a sniper, which is a precision. It's very narrow. And this, for the size of the microphone. Now, you can get longer shotguns mm -hmm. that can be very directional, like mm -hmm. right on. They use that in like football, mm -hmm. different sports applications, like, like people on the side of the field, not just the parabolics, but sometimes they'll have like a long shotgun be able to pinpoint certain sounds mm. but this for the size is probably one of the most directional you can get you'll notice how quick when you got off access it I was did. gone awaiting the sensation of a short sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block it's known in the industry that uh, if you really need a good boom operator or be really good at booming to use this mic all the time yeah to make sure it sounds great in other words you need a good boom operator that knows the, the directionality, how important it is, and has practice with making sure that microphone is the right angle, the right proximity, all those details matter. Yep. Now we've moved on to this mic, the last mic we're testing, which is the Sennheiser 416. And I'm sure you guys all know about this microphone. Nice tried and true. You've seen a movie since the 70s. <laughs> You've heard this microphone at least 10 times. Have we though? <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's, it's so many people have it. It's one of the main mics used. I know mixers that hold this, you know, because specifically it's the tone that everyone wants. It's the same mic since the 70s. They just, they redesigned like how the power and et cetera. But a lot, not even just on sets. There's a lot of voiceover artists that use this mic specifically. Interesting. Um, you have Dada Post houses always have it in their back room to use. The It's the mic <laughs> that, it's the famous mic which the DDS Mic 2 and a lot of other companies are, as, uh, are all trying to copy slash bring down because even though it came out in the 70s, it's still a thousand dollars. Yeah. Which I did not talk about prices much because there's a reason for that. We're saving yeah. that to later. I never even talk about prices in videos regardless because <laughs> they always change. You, you don't want to. They always change, yeah. but uh, we, you'll notice this is a very interesting test. You're going to notice it might be a little bit narrower in the pattern. Fair. But something that you're going to also notice, listen to the sound, listen to this thing as, you know, if you can, as best you can with YouTube compression. The other three are all within the same realm of price. And it's expensive for, you know, like the classic, the, you know, the casual YouTuber and et cetera. But mm -hmm. for the professionals, it's kind of the mid tier, mm -hmm. which is between the 800 to $1,000 range. That's why this is a great test. Yep. All right, so another important factor, this shotgun microphone, the capsule is pointed towards my lips. Very important. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. So yeah, that that is very directional. Man, I, I, I just love the dynamics and the, uh, the broadcasty feel from that mic. Yeah. But especially when I went all the way like back here, you can't, you can barely, <laughs> it's so isolating. Yep. It isolates it really well. But then if I were to get right back in front of it, and if I keep going back, 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 all the way back here, can you guys still kind of pick up some of my voice within that like 5K, the five kilohertz range, maybe 10 kilohertz. It sounds really dynamic, a good tone. And then when I get back, coming closer with proximity over here, now my voice sounds really rich. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty crazy. So now we're back to the DPA 2017. This is what the microphone sounds like inside a garage. We're going to now go outside and get away from this very acoustic-like garage so you guys can hear the difference between an internal, very acoustic-like environment um, compared to the outside, what these shotgun microphones were really meant to do. Um, isolate traffic, a lot of outside noise that you don't want to hear in your recording. Sometimes it's, you know, you can't really get it out of the recording, but um, yeah, let's test it out. 